Welcome back, gang. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me for another stumble through. In this episode, what we'll be doing is deploying Red Hat's Virtualization Manager, or otherwise known as the hosted engine. So there are a couple things I want to get into, so let's just kind of jump right into that then, right? Now here, if you deploy the hypervisor, uh, Red Hat Virtualization, you would probably want to initially you know, SSH in and start doing things, right? And you can, you can do this all by the command line and provision the hosted engine or manager, but we'll, I'm gonna show you a different way to do it. Now up here, once you log in, and actually before you even log in, you'll notice that it prompts you with a little information about the web console. So we have this web console here available on port 9090. Let's actually navigate to that web console. So boom, here we are. This is the login screen for the web console, otherwise known as kind of cockpit, is what it's based off of. Uh, Red Hat Virtualization has a special version of cockpit that has some additional functions to handle the virtualization deployment. Um, now I've got two hosts here, Rev2 and Rev1. You know, well, let's flip that back around. Either way, Rev1, Rev2, and you can log into either one of those. If this is a brand new cluster, so we can deploy the hosted engine wherever we want to, really. And we'll be using shared storage between these hosts so that it can kind of float between them. So I'm just going to log in as root here. Now I like the web UI because it kind of makes your life a little bit easier. It, you can do a couple things that uh, are a little bit more user-friendly compared to kind of compiling everything together with the terminal. Either way. This is the dashboard, so once you kind of jump in, you'll see this initial bit here. You might want to connect this to Red Hat Insights. It's kind of like the check engine light for your Red Hat environment. Very useful, very valuable. Uh, the only thing otherwise that I've done to these hosts are register them with a subscription. So I've attached a Red Hat virtualization subscription to them. I've assigned it a host name. Uh, we've got a bit of network set up already. Now, I've got a number of interfaces, physical interfaces, on these machines. They're identical Dell R620 machines. They've got four one port, or four one gigabit Ethernet ports, and then they've got two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. I've already configured the one gigabit Ethernet ports in a bond, so it's kind of put them together so we can maximize throughput and logically address that interface as one whole interface. This bond is going to be an aggregate bond, or 802.3AD. Uh, there are a couple different modes in which you can bond your interfaces, but uh, not all of them are supported for virtualization networks. So the documentation link is going to be down below in the comments to kind of guide you through which bonding modes are supported. Aggregate bonding is supported, so I've gone ahead and set that up. I've got... Uh, static IPs for my dual stack configuration in, for IPv4 and for IPv6 here. Now something that's kind of important to make mention of, traditionally for a dual stack configuration, um, you would maybe have two DNS servers for IPv4 and two DNS servers for IPv6, and that's, you know, fine. Now, whenever you're using something that is built upon glibc it can't actually address more than three name servers at a time so if you do have two per ip network it will actually fail the hosted engine deployment so what i have configured here is just one dns server for ipv4 and one dns server for ipv6 and it'll work just fine um, again i've got this 802.3 bond we can set this to different modes. Not all of them are supported though. So again, the documentation is going to be linked down below. Now I will configure these 10 gig connections as another bond, but I'm not going to do that right now. It's best if you're initially setting up a new cluster to just have your initial management network set up so that it doesn't kind of get a little confused along the way. It can kind of mess up sometimes. So uh, we've got our networking set up. We've got DNS in the back end as well. So I've got name resolution to here. I've already got a static IP and the host name assigned for what will be the hosted engine or Red Hat Virtualization Manager. And uh, that's pretty much all the pre-configuration that I've gone ahead and done. 
So let's go ahead and jump into this virtualization tab and click into hosted engine. Now here you're prompted with two different options. You can do this in a hyperconverged fashion or you can deploy the hosted engine upon shared storage that's located elsewhere. Now, if you are deploying with one host, you can do it hyper-converged. If you're deploying uh, with three or more hosts, you can do it hyper-converged as well. And that will set up Gluster on those hosts and share the storage between those hypervisor hosts. Unfortunately, you can't do it with two hosts like I have here in this example. There are some split brain issues that you run into, so it's best not to do that and otherwise go with some shared storage. So let's just click on hosted engine and there's a nice little start button there for you, right? This is going to be a wizard. It's you just put in a couple bits of information, click start, and it's off to the races. So just to kind of clarify, again, the process that we're going through here, if you're familiar with a VMware, vSphere environment sort of thing, uh, what we've already done is deployed ESXi onto these two physical bare metal hosts. This is what we're seeing here, and this is kind of, you know, the dashboard on those individual hypervisors. What we're going to be doing in this step as we deploy the manager or hosted engine is deploying vCenter, right? So those are the kind of parallels uh, just to, again, make yourself a little bit more familiar if you're coming from that sort of environment. Now it's going to ask us for a couple settings for our hosted engine VM. I'm going to set this to static because again I like to run static IPs for most of my important things here. Set an CIDR address, the gateway address is fine. Now, your IP configuration is likely going to be a little different from mine, and that's fine. Just uh, make sure to coordinate that with whoever's operating your network. Now, I will, you know, set this static IP before I set the engine VM fully qualified domain name here. That's because whenever you set the FQDN, it'll actually do a DNS test to see if it's reachable. And now that I have the static IP set, it will be. And my DNS name is going to be revm.chemo.labs. And if you click outside this input field, again, it's gonna validate that FQDN and go about it from there. Now the bridge interface is gonna be that bond that we set up earlier, uh, so that's fine. It only lists uh, active interfaces. The root password for this VM, I'm just going to give it a quick password. Root SSH access, sure, in some environments you probably wouldn't want that. The number of virtual CPUs and RAM will vary depending on how large your environment is, how many VMs you're running. There will be some guidance down below linking to the documentation to help you guide through that measurement uh, calculation. All right, we got a green check mark. That's great. It resolved just fine. I like to expand this advanced area, just kind of quickly show you what's going on and to double check your uh, hypervisor host FQDN was resolved properly as well. So here I've got rev1.chemo.labs, it found that hypervisor host, that's great. Instead of resolving these host names by DNS, if you want to do it via ping, you can do that there too and just switch that testing uh, option. Now let's click next. We set the root password as you physically log into that VM. This will be the internal administrative username's password, right? So this is what you would log into the user interface with instead of just SSHing into that hosted engine VM. Uh, we're gonna set a quick password on that too. I'm not gonna worry too much about the notification settings. I don't really bother with that too much myself. If you do have an SMTP, the SMTP server set up already, you might want to configure that here. So we'll click next and it'll give you a little synopsis of your configuration metrics and all the input that you've provided. And if this looks good, if it checks out, click prepare VM and we just got to wait a little while. Now, if you look at this and say, Wait a minute, that's kind of familiar. Well, you might not be wrong about that, especially if you've used Ansible before. This hosted engine deployment is all powered by Ansible, so that's pretty fantastic because since Ansible is idempotent or idempotent, however you say it, uh, if something does kind of flub or mess up along the way, we can run this again and know that it'll probably configure that without any sort of issue, which is really nice. 
that means you don't have to completely tear down everything and restart uh, the whole process from scratch. So either way, this is going to be uh, just a little moment here and we're going to just hang out and come back in a moment and configure our storage and from there it'll be pretty much done. Again, the storage aspect of this virtual machine is going to provision it locally on this hypervisor host temporarily. In the next step, in step four, we're going to attach the shared storage that will be accessible between these hypervisor hosts and it will be uh, where the actual hosted engine VM lives. It'll move from the local storage to that shared storage. In this case, I'm going to use NFS. There are other you know, you know, attached storage options that you can use from iSCSI to uh, fiber channel, LUNs, and all sorts of stuff in between. If you are going to provision storage with fiber channel, there are a couple of commands you have to run beforehand in order to get it up and running. Again, I'll link that down below in the description to kind of guide you with those few simple lines that you need to run in order to get it up and running. But either way, we'll just kind of hang out, we'll wait, and we'll be back after this is done. All right, and we're back. So that didn't take actually too long, and we've got the virtual machine, or the OVA, kind of already deployed locally again, temporarily, and now in this next step, let's kind of connect it to some storage. So again, you can select a couple different kinds of storage if you've already got a cluster cluster set up on a side that you didn't want to have hyperconverged, NFS, iSCSI, fiber channel. Again, there are a couple things you need to set up for fiber channel beforehand, link down below. But here, what I'm going to do is set up my NFS connection, uh, and that is going to be compendium.sand.chemo.labs. And you give it a colon, and then you describe the path in which it resides. So for me, on this NFS server, it's mount, exports, and rev. You can click advance and just kind of configure what size uh, disk you want to provide for this hosted engine virtual machine. Um, again, the sizing depends on how many hypervisor hosts, how many VMs you're going to have, and your growth expectations. So I've got the NFS connection details set up. Click next. It'll again kind of prompt you for uh, verification and click finish deployment. And we're back to waiting on this little playbook to finish. And we're back again. So we've got the whole thing pretty much configured now. And again, it didn't take too long. Uh, in total, between my jibber jabber and uh, the general runtime, it took about 30 minutes to deploy the host engine or again the Red Hat Virtualization Manager. And it was Pretty much an automated process. Uh, of course, there are some additional customizations you can do, uh, applying OpenSCAP, you know, profiles. You can enable FIPS mode if that's something you need to do in a more secure environment. But otherwise, uh, you know, this is pretty much done here. We'll click done. We'll click yes to exit out of the wizard. Now, if we click on this dashboard, you should see health OK. As long as you see health OK, then everything is probably checking out and additionally you'll want to see virtual machines one running that means we've got the uh, engine running on this host and what we can do is go to revm.chemo.labs click advanced proceed if you've actually got your own certificate authority and uh, you set that up and distribute proper certificates you won't see that warning um, but otherwise we can jump into an administrative portal and start setting up our cluster, start joining other hosts to this cluster, or setting up our data centers and so on, uh, just jumping into the VM portal. We're not gonna go through that in this uh, video, but uh, from here, what I would personally do with this environment is set up the other networks, set up additional storage domains, uh, again, attach that other Rev2 host that I've got, and a couple other things to kind of get this virtualization cluster up and running but uh, other than that you know thank you again for joining me hopefully this was informative hopefully uh, you learned a couple of tricks you know a couple you know pitfalls to avoid and uh, happy virtualizing